my course, Game Development Basics, Week 2, Lesson 9, Widgets and UI Setup. In this lesson, we're going to explain the purpose of a widget, and then we'll demonstrate creating a widget. So far, in both of our projects, whenever we want to show the player some information, we've just been using a print node to print that information to the player's screen. But this is mainly used for development purposes. For a full game, we want to have some UI that the player can see while they're playing the game. And for this, we can use the widget component system. Widgets are components that allow the creation of UI elements using Unreal Motion Graphics, or UMG. And you may see UMG from time to time, it's usually referring to the widget system. Widgets allow us to show text, images, progress bars, sliders, and many more things to the player's screen. And if you're familiar with web development, it shares a lot of similarities with CSS. Widgets have their own separate blueprint system that allow them to have access to many different functions. And a widget can contain other widget elements, so you can have widgets within your widgets. Let's demonstrate creating a widget for our player's UI. Here we are back in our project, and I'm gonna create a new folder in our content folder called UI. And let's go into here, and we're gonna right click, and down here at the bottom we see user interface. Let's select widget blueprint. And we're just gonna create a user widget blueprint. And the standard for these is to begin with either a W underscore or WBP underscore, and then the name of our widget. Let's call this one HUD for heads up display. We'll open this widget. And we see that instead of seeing our blueprint graph, we see a very different view that we haven't seen before. Up here in the top right corner, there are two selections, designer, which allows us to design the looks of the widget from the user's perspective, and then graph, which allows us to set the functionality of the widget, similar to an actor's blueprint. Let's go back to the designer tab, and we're gonna start by creating a canvas panel. And if we hover over it, it says, is a friendly panel that allows widgets to be laid out in an arbitrary locations, anchored and Z ordered with other children of the canvas. The canvas is a great widget for manual layout but bad when you want to procedurally generate widgets and place them in a container. This is great when we're just creating a quick heads up display. So let's drag this down here. And now we can see that in our blueprint, we have a canvas panel. And this canvas panel will be set to fill the screen. Next, let's grab text and drag that onto our canvas panel. And we'll see that there's a text block now in the top left corner. Let's click on the text block and we can see that it gives us some information on how to set up this text block. The first thing we'll start with is an anchor. If we open this, we can see various anchor points, the corners, the center. We can anchor it to the top, the middle or the bottom, left, middle or right, or have it take up the whole screen. Let's select the top middle. And we'll notice that this little sun here has now moved to the top middle. This shows us our anchor point. We can then drag this and move it to the approximate location we want, and it will be anchored to this location so that when we create this widget, it'll show up on the player's screen in the top middle. Here we can change the position manually, we can change the size manually, we can change the alignment. For instance, I am anchored to the top left corner. If I wanted to be anchored to the middle, I can type 0.5 here, and now it's anchored to the middle of this. So if I change the X to zero, this will now be exactly in the center. We can click size to content, which means it will automatically adjust this to fit the size of whatever is in there. We can then change the text. So we can change this to say test, or for our situation, bugs squashed. We can then change the appearance. So we can change the color of this to a blue or a red or wh whatever color we want. We can change the font. There are some fonts built in. We can also 
add new fonts. We'll talk about that in a future lesson. We can change the typeface, the size, all of these things. For now, let's leave this white so we can easily see it on our player's screen. And the way we add a widget to our player's screen is to create that widget and then add it to the player's viewport or to the player's screen. And in a single player game, I like to do this in the game mode. So let's go to the game mode and let's move this timer out a little bit and let's drag off begin play and we'll type create widget. And here it's asking us what widget do we want to create? Let's find our HUD and create that. We can also assign it to a player. So if there's multiple players in our game, we can assign it to a specific player's controller. And after this, let's type add to and viewport. And the input of this is a widget. So let's take this widget and plug it in here. Let's compile. And now when we press play, we'll see that at the top of the player's screen, bug squash zero, but it's not actually adjusting. So let's change this to update whenever we kill a bug. And if you remember, we're killing our bug on our event actor begin overlap. When a cannonball hits the bug, we're going to destroy the actor, which is the cannonball, and then we'll destroy the bug itself. Let's set up a new function here in our game mode called add to score. And in here, we're going to need a variable called bugs squashed. And we'll change this type to an integer. And we don't need an array. Let's set it up as a single integer. And it's going to start at zero. So let's drag it in. And then we'll hit plus plus to use increment, similar to the decrement. And that's it. When we call add to score, it's going to take our bug squash and we'll just add one. Let's head back to our bug actor. And here where we kill a bug, meaning when it overlaps with a cannonball, and we are destroying it, let's call that function that we just created. And let's start by casting to the game mode. And we'll say, get game mode. We'll talk more about casting in future lessons, but just for now to explain what's happening is we're getting the game mode, which in our level should be BP game mode. And we're casting it to BP game mode, which means we're taking this object, which is our game mode, we're checking to see, is it BP game mode? If it is, we'll execute and we have access to the functions of BP game mode. If it isn't, then our cast will fail and we can drag off of here and do something like a print string to give our player an indication that there's some type of error. And I recommend doing this type of thing whenever you're casting, if you don't need the cast failed, just throw a little print string in here and that'll give you an indication that something's wrong and then it'll point you in the right direction. Off of our game mode cast, we can now type add to score and we can call that function from our bug class. Let's add this in here. And now after we destroy the cannonball, we're gonna get our game mode. We're gonna cast it to BP game mode to make sure that we have the correct game mode class. And that'll give us access to the functions of BP game mode, where we can call add to score, and then we'll destroy the bug. If we go back to our widget blueprint, where we have bugs squashed, next to the text, you'll see this little bind drop down. We can drop this down and say create binding. And it creates a new function in our blueprint. Now again, we need to get access to that value that's stored in our game mode. So let's go to our event graph and we'll delete these two. So we have just construct, which means whenever this blueprint is constructed, we'll call this. This is similar to begin play in an actor class. Let's drag off here and let's cast again to BP game mode. And for our object, we're going to say get game mode. And within our HUD, let's create a reference to game mode and that way we can get access to it whenever we want. If you remember, once the level is loaded, the game mode is loaded as well. 
So we know that once we start this level, the game mode will not change. So it's pretty safe to take a reference to this. And we'll leave it as as BP game mode, just so we know what this is. Let's compile and we'll go back to this function that we created. And just so we don't get confused, let's change this to get bugs squashed text. We can then drag our game mode reference and get it. And then we can get bugs squashed. And we could drag this directly in here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take the text of this and it's gonna update it to whatever the output of that function is. But this is just gonna show us one value of whatever the number of bug squashed is. And a player may eventually figure this out, but we want a little bit more information for the player to use. So let's disconnect this. And we're gonna start by typing string. And we notice there's a to text from string node. And this will take an input of a string and make it into text. From here, we can type app to get the append. And strings are unique in that we can append multiple strings together to make one output string. We could take our bug squash and plug it into the second value. And that's gonna take our integer and make it into a string. And then for the first pin, we can type bugs squashed colon space so that there's a space after it. And then it will append whatever the value of this integer is after that. Let's compile and test this out. Now, whenever I squash a bug, we should see that number start to go up and it does. The next element I wanna to add to the HUD is some indicator of the player's health. And for this, we're gonna use a progress bar. So let's take a progress bar and we'll drag it in. And we're gonna use a health bar to show the player's health. Let's dock this to the bottom left corner and we'll move it into the approximate location we want. And similar to the text, we have some information about the anchors here. So we can set the size. If we want it to be a little bit larger, we could set it maybe to 150 and 50, even 200. We have style, so we can change the way that this looks in our game. For progress, we have a percentage value, which we can drag this up to one and we can see our bar filling. We can also set the way in which it fills, right to left, left to right, top to bottom, so this gives you a lot of flexibility on how you want your bar to look. Let's stick with left to right. And down here, we have the fill color. So we can change it to, let's say, green for health. And now it would be a green bar that fills up and depletes. Next to our percent, there's another bind key. Let's click this and say create binding. And we'll change this to get tower health percent. And to get these values, we're now gonna need some references to our tower. Let's go back to our event graph and let's get a reference to our actor. So let's say get actor of class player tower. And again, we know in our game that there's only ever gonna be one player tower. So this is okay to do it this way. Typically, this is not a stable implementation but it's okay for our game. So let's take the output here and let's promote this to a variable and we'll call this tower. We'll compile, head back to our function, get tower health percent. Let's drag our tower in and let's drag off here and say health and then we can get our tower health. And we need a percentage. Now we only have one value here and we need to make a percentage. And remember, integers can only be whole numbers. So let's start by changing this to a float. And this will give us our current health. And we want to divide this by something to get a percentage. So we'll take our current health and we'll divide it by a number. Now we know that we set our max health to three, but this obviously isn't good for scalability. 
if we were to change the tower's max health, we would need to remember to go back in here and change this as well. It would be better if we had another variable to reference that's set when we're playing the game. And we can do this by setting up a max health variable. Let's go back to our tower and we're gonna create a new variable called maximum health. And we'll set this to three to start. And we want whenever we start our game to automatically set the tower health to whatever the max health is. So let's drag tower health and say set. And we'll set it to max health. So now when we spawn our tower, it's gonna to get whatever this max health value is, and it's gonna set the current tower health to the maximum health. This will also allow us to now get access to maximum health, and we'll make this into a float as well. So now we'll take our current tower health, divide it by the maximum health, which should give us a percentage, Let's compile and see how this works. And down here in the bottom, we'll see our little health bar. And when we get hit, we'll see that it's ticking down and then it will eventually reach zero, which means the health bar is depleted. But we still haven't set up a game over function, which means it's just gonna keep going down and down and down. But for now, we have our widget set up. One thing I did notice though, is that because our ground is also green, green maybe isn't the best color for this. So let's change it to blue instead. And that's much easier for the player to see. So in the final lesson, we're gonna set up that lose condition for game over, and we'll do some finishing touches on our project.